This discusses the details of the first homework. Let's start from the main.c file. At the top of the file, several files are included. These are called the header files. The top four, stdio.h, stdlib.h, strng.h, and stdbool.h are header files provided by the C language. These header files define the information needed for the program. The first header file declares the standard input and output functions, such as printing and reading from files. The second header file defines exit failure and exit success. The third header file declares the functions for strings, such as comparing two strings. The fourth defines the logic values, true and false. In typical Linux settings, these header files should be stored in the directory slash usr slash includee. At line 12, this file includes another header file. This file is defined by our own program, not the C language. Please notice that this header file's name is enclosed by quotation marks. Before we talk about the rest of main.c, let's read header.h first. The top of header.h, at line 5 and line 6, has if and def and define. What do they mean? Why do we need them? Header files are included, not compiled or linked. In a complex program, it is possible that the same header file is included by several .c files. As a result, the same information may be seen by GCC multiple times. When this occurs, GCC may get confused by seeing the same information again and again. The top if and def and define ensure that the header file is included only once. The fifth line must be matched by ndif at the very bottom of the header file. This header file declares four functions, add up, mull up, sub up, and dive up. They represent the functions for addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division. These are the declarations of the functions. The purpose of function declaration is to inform GCC that these functions will be provided at the link time, not compile time. When a C file is compiled, GCC assumes the declared functions exist somewhere and these functions will be found later. This header file declares four functions. Each function takes two arguments. Both are long integers. Each function also returns one long integer. Let's return to the main function. The main function is enclosed by ifdef test main. This allows us to turn on or off this main function by defining or not defining test underscore main. The main function needs four arguments. Two are integers and one indicates the operation. The operation can be addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. The function checks whether argc is 4. If it is not 4, the program returns exit failure and stops. If argc is 4, the program continues. Via L and via LB are long integers by converting the strings argv1 and 2 using the strtol function explained earlier. If argv3 is uppercase letter, a, uh, the addop function is called. Since this is a valid operation, valid is set to true. The program continues checking whether argv is s, m, or d. If argv3 is none of the four allowed operations, the program prints an error message and returns exit failure. If argv3 is one of the four allowed operations, the program returns exit success. Next, let's see add.c. This is a relatively simple file. At the top, 
It includes the header file we saw earlier. The function is enclosed by ifdef test underscore add an endif if test underscore add is defined. The function is turned on if test underscore add is not defined. This function is discarded. Why is this useful? Let's look at what solution.c has. It has something similar. However, there's a crucial difference. Instead of using ifdef, it uses ifndef. By adding in, this function is used only if test underscore. Add is not defined. Thus, test underscore. Add decides which add op to use. If test underscore. Add is defined, the add op function in add.c is used. If test underscore. Add is not defined, the add op function in solution.c is used. This is how all programming assignments will be structured and graded. Each function you write should be enclosed by a pair of ifdef and endif. If the test symbol is defined, your function is used. If the test symbol is not defined, a reference solution is used. By using a reference solution, it is possible to grade other parts of your programs even if this part is incorrect. How will the symbol be defined or not defined? This is controlled by makefile. In makefile, the test flags define what functions will be tested. Now, let's run the program and see what we get. If the arguments are 4, 9, and a, uh, the output is 13. If the arguments are 4, 9, and s, the output is minus 5. If the arguments are 4, 9, and m, the output is 36. If the arguments are 4, 9, and t, the output is unknown operation t. If we remove minus d test underscore, add from the test flag, remove all object files, and run make again. This is what we get. If the operation is at, the reference solution is used. For subtraction and multiplication, the reference solution is not used. Make file can be used for testing. If we scroll down make file, we can find a section about test sub. It depends on main. This means that if the executable file called main does not already exist, make will create the executable file. This was specified earlier in the make file. If the executable file already exists, then test sub will execute the program with two test cases. The first test case has arguments for COM5, and as the program's output is stored in a file called sub1.out. The greater than sign here is called redirection. It redirects the outputs from the computer screen to a file. This is necessary because if the output is shown on the screen, a person needs to sit in front of the screen and read it. If the output is saved in a file, then there is no need for a person to sit in front of the screen. The program's output is saved in this file called sub1.out. The next line uses the diff command to compare two files. The first file is the newly created file that stores the program's output. The second file is the known correct answer. If these two files have the same content, the diff command says nothing. If these two files are different, the diff command points out which lines are different. The make file is the second test case using 7, 26, and S as the arguments. The program's output is compared with another file, called sub2.correct, that stores the correct answer. How to run these tests? In bash, type make followed by test sub. 
This will run the commands in lines 46 to 49. The dependence of main will ensure that the executable file is built before running the tests. It is possible to run even more tests using make file. This example shows that test all is composed of test add, test sub, test mul, and test dive. Test add tests the addition function by using a as the last argument. Test sub tests the subtraction function by using s as the last argument. In all tests, the program's outputs are saved to files. The files are compared with known correct answers by using the diff command. To run all tests, type make test all in bash. Make will then call test add, test sub, test mul, and test dive. Next, let's see the bottom of this make file. If you type make clean, the machine generated files will be removed. It is important that you do not put star.c here. If you put star.c here, your program will be erased. Sometimes, you want to remove all machine generated files to clean up your directory. This command can become helpful. Here is a summary of what makefile can do. Inside a makefile, we can define symbols. These symbols can be used to turn on GCC warnings or for conditional compilations. A makefile can compile .c files and generate object files. A makefile can link object files to create an executable file. A makefile can track which .c files have been changed and rebuilt the object files when necessary. If any object file is rebuilt, the executable file is also rebuilt. A makefile can run tests and compare the outputs with known correct answers. As you can see, a makefile can do many things for you. If you use makefile properly, you can save significant amounts of time because many of these tasks are automated.